a hero <clears throat> can be made in just a moment. A moment can arise and, and, and you have that, that, that second where you just have to leap into action. And, and in that moment, in that action, you become a hero. But then some heroes, there, there's a few that their entire life is based upon them being a hero. I would say my grandfather, his entire life was based upon him being my hero. If I needed anything, they provided. Books for school, letterman jacket, class ring. If I needed it, they provided. His whole life was built upon what would happen if I was gone. He wanted to instill in us something greater than the here and now. He wanted to leave a legacy. See, these, these people who, who have a lifetime of, of walking as heroes, acting as heroes, they, they are the ones who die and they leave behind a legacy, as I was talking about with my grandfather. They are the ones who live for something that is far bigger than themselves. They are the ones that know that there is more to life than what they have or what they're doing in that moment. They are the ones willing to lay down their life for the greatest mission ever. There's no greater legacy than to pass on the mission that Jesus has given us. <clears throat> the same mission that he gave his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. The, these were Jesus' last words to his disciples. These were one of the last things that he says to his disciples. And remember, last words are lasting words. Moments before Jesus was to depart from this earth, he calls in his disciples and, and, he, and he says to them, he says, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. There is no greater mission than this. This is our mission. These words, they were not just for that moment. They were not just for then. It is for every believer for all eternity. Jesus commands us to go and make disciples and then teach them to observe the command and make more disciples. So I want to discuss just three things in regards to this great mission that we are on, this search and rescue mission that we are on. I want to talk about three things. The scope of the mission, the strategy of the mission, and the source of the mission's fulfillment. The first is the scope of the mission. I personally, me personally, speaking about my life, I want my life to carry on far beyond my death. I want my life to be more than just, just a dash between two dates. I want my life to go far beyond a church service, far beyond a youth event, far beyond a children's ministry, far beyond my eulogy. I want my life to go beyond all of that. Jesus gave us a mission that is bigger than me. It's bigger than all of us. So what is the scope of that mission? It's simple. Go into all nations until the end of the age. That's Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The mission, this mission, it's so great that it's worth more than our life. In fact, it's even worth our death. Now, thankfully, in the, the area that we live in, in the nation that we live in, we don't have to face death at this time. Who knows what's coming? Sometimes it looks a little dark around the corner. But right now, in this moment, we don't really face persecution. We don't really face death for our belief in Christ. But like I spoke on last week, 
Sometimes all it takes is for us, for someone to give us just that one little look. And in that moment, we're embarrassed. And all of a sudden, we have this fear come over us, and we don't want to talk about God anymore. We don't want to talk about Jesus anymore because we feel in that moment we are being persecuted. That is the number one, one of the number one tools that the enemy uses. If you were here last week, you remember it. It's that spirit of fear, that spirit of embarrassment that will come upon us. We feel in those moments that we are being persecuted. Unless we realize the significance of this mission, of this work, and we are willing to face embarrassment, rejection, humiliation, and even death, we will not be able to carry this mission on and this legacy that's been left for us to fulfill. We have to be willing to face embarrassment, rejection, humiliation, and even death. Because this mission is not only worth our life, but it's worth our death. The only way we can carry on this mission is if we pass it on to the next generation. Who's going to live longer than us? Who's going to be able to do things we couldn't do? This is why, hear me church, this is why we can't hold on too tight to tradition. Tradition can become an idol. And it can affect how we make disciples. We can chain our future to the past when we do this. This, this right here, this right here, this, this never changes. Only the presentation of it. A pastor friend of mine, he said, uh, he, he, was, he was teaching, I don't, I don't even remember what class he was teaching. He said he taught it for years, taught it for years, taught it for years. They started out with a whiteboard. And then, then they moved on to um, overhead projectors, and, and then they, they moved on to uh, dry erase boards, and then they, they moved on to smart boards. He said, and uh, technology kept changing. The presentation kept changing. He said, but the one thing that never changed is what I was teaching. And so many times, the church, they get so hung up on traditions that they can no longer make the disciples that they were called to make. They get hung up with just coming to church. Well, that's how we have always done it. And it becomes an idol. And then what we do is we miss out on what the actual command is to go into all nations. When when I see that word nations, I believe he's saying go into all generations. Go into all races. Go into all sexes. Go into all, all these things. Go there and make disciples. But if we get hung up on the here and now and how it's always been, We're pouring into the here and now, and then the church is going to die. Until we pour into the next generation, they can't pour into the next generation. They can't pour into the next generation, and Christianity is going to die. Into all nations. The Bible, the scripture, the gospel, it never changes, only the presentation of it. So how can we do this? We have to have a strategy. The main strategy of the mission is to make disciples. That's the strategy. That passage, it goes on to talk about baptizing and and teaching, but the primary focus of our passage that we were reading a few moments ago is to make disciples. And the rest is just about how we go and, and we do it. It's what we do. And the crazy thing about this command is that, that it, it is not obeyed until the next generation is also carrying out the mission. It's not obeyed until the next generation carries the mission forward and makes disciples. Simply making disciples is not enough. Those disciples then have to make disciples as well. We have to continue to pour, continue to pour. It's almost like if, <clears throat> if you were to pre- prepare for a test and you get there and somebody else is going in to take the test for you. That's kind of what we've, we've been called to do. We pour our lives into these individuals in hopes and in prayer that they then pour their lives into individuals. In hopes and prayers that they then pour their lives into individuals. That's what the command is. We talked about it last week. One of the problems that we is that we believe knowledge is power. The real test is not what you know, but what you obey. It's not enough to just know facts about the gospel, facts about scripture. It's not enough to know that. We have to then put into practice what we know. 
We have to begin fulfilling the mission by what we know. And honestly, if I'm being real with you, just obeying scripture is still not enough. We don't fulfill the mission. We don't fulfill this command until others, those that we have influenced, then begin influencing others. That's when we fulfill it. That's a tough pill to swallow, knowing that it depends on somebody else. But I'm telling you, if we do our job as a disciple, our disciples will make disciples. We can, we can read a testimony of it right here. In these pages, we can read a testimony of how the disciples made disciples and then made disciples. And then here we are. Because of those disciples, making disciples, making disciples. Until they begin fulfilling it, because of their influence, we don't have anything to fulfill this mission. Knowledge is not enough. We are educated beyond our obedience, and more education will not help us fulfill this mission. I'll say it again. We are educated beyond our obedience, and more education is not going to help us fulfill this mission. Knowledge is not enough. What we do with that knowledge, that's what's important. Knowledge is measured by how <clears throat> you put into practice what you know. We often emphasize knowledge at the expense of obedience. There's many preachers in pulpits who have great knowledge but no obedience. The moment they step down and they walk out of the doors, they're living in sin we have many church folk who come in the church every week who have all the great knowledge of this word, but that's all they have is knowledge. They leave out of here and they live sinful lives. We emphasize knowledge at the expense of obedience. It isn't what you know. It's what you do with what you know. And that's where you can really make a difference. So how do we fulfill this mission? How, how, what is the source of our mission's fulfillment? The crazy thing about this mission that, that Jesus gave is that this mission wasn't thrown out to some extraordinary people. This mission was thrown out to ordinary people. It's as if he walked down the streets, picked up a few scrubs, put them together, gave them a game plan and said, let's go win the ball game. That's what he did. And anybody in their right mind, especially Jesus, would have never thought that a bunch of misfits could carry out this great mission. When we read it from that perspective, it almost sounds foolish. How could Jesus, Son of God, God in the flesh, expect a bunch of misfits to be able to carry out this great mission? I'm going to tell you, sitting in this room right now, we're a bunch of misfits. We've all gone through some stuff. We all got scars. We all got areas in our life that maybe we wouldn't, wouldn't like to talk about. We're a bunch of misfits carrying out this great mission. It sounds foolish until you read it just a little bit closer. Jesus, he begins with these words. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. This does not say some authority. It doesn't say a little bit of authority. It doesn't even say a lot of authority. It says all authority, all power. With just this statement, I believe that Jesus is telling us and showing us just how important this command is and how seriously we should take it. But that's, that's not the only thing we need to look at. We need to look just a little bit further. He says, I and with you always. Verse 20. I am with you always. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always. All authority. All power. And if that's not enough, I got you. I'm with you. All power. All authority. On heaven and on earth. And I'm with you. This is the source of fulfillment for the great mission that we are on. 
all authority in heaven and on earth, and he is with us. We don't have to do it alone. Come on, guys. That should be shouting, shouting ground right there. We're not alone. We have all power and authority because Jesus Christ is with us. We don't have to do this thing alone. The Lord is with you. The Lord is in this place. He is with us. Charles Spurgeon, he said it this way. He said, you have, the, you, you have a factor here that is absolutely infinite, and what does it matter what other factors may be? I will do the best I can, says one. Any fool can do that. He that believes in Christ attempts the impossible and performs it. Hallelujah that we have a risen Savior who gives us all power and all authority, and he is with us. What else do we need? What else do we need? With this powerful and present source, how can we all not be heroes? How can we be embarrassed or have fear? What is it? What is it this morning that is stopping you from fulfilling this mission? Is it a boss? Is it a teacher? Is it a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Is it some sort of relationship that you have? What is it? That is hindering you. The reality is that none of these obstacles, none of these obstacles compare to the authority of Jesus. We have to understand that we have all authority in Jesus because he is with us all the time. He never leaves us, never forsakes us. He is with us all the time. So we have the scope of the mission. We have the strategy of the mission and the source of the mission's fulfillment. I'm going to tell you, that last one, that right there should be enough. We read all the time and we see all the time the power and the authority that comes with Jesus. We see healings. We see miracles. I heard of a healing in our Sunday school class this morning. Individual couldn't walk, couldn't do anything on her own. Her uh, nurse or, or whatever it is was helping her, giving her a bath, and she said she heard a male voice. This right here won't in my notes. I'm telling you, God will give it to you. When you trust him, he will give it to you. She said as, as the lady's sitting there giving her a bath, she heard a male voice, and she asked her caretaker, did you hear that? She said, did I hear what? That male voice. No, who did it sound like? She said, it sounded like the voice of God. Well, what did he say to you? You are healed. All authority, all power in heaven and on earth, and I'm with you always. What more do we need? He is the source of our fulfillment of his mission. In his last words, Jesus gave us the code for this mission, this bigger than me mission. This is the very reason that Paul lived his life the way that he did, because he knew it was larger than his life and it was greater than his death. And this is why he needed to pass this on to Timothy. This is why I need to pass it on to you. This is why you need to pass it on to your one. And then their one. And then their one. We've seen Paul's last words. We've seen Jesus' last words. Both of these last words, they were telling their closest friends to make disciples who make disciples until the end of time from nation to nation from generation to generation Paul told Timothy he said be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus I believe there's a reason it says in Christ Jesus because it says all authority and power in heaven and on earth and I am with you 
So if we have Jesus Christ, we have that power. We have that authority. We have that strength through the grace that God gives us in Christ Jesus. He said, you have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now, teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will then be able to pass them on to others. It's not enough to just simply be a disciple. We have to make other disciples. So there's, there's two, two steps, two steps that we have to take care of today. Just two. This is going to be a little different closing. Uh, last week I said I, I didn't want to uh, say what I usually do. Usually I'll say this is not to embarrass you. And, you know, I, it's not. But if it needs to embarrass you, then let it embarrass you. The first thing that has to happen is we have to accept Christ. We have to first become a disciple. And then the second thing is we have to be willing to go and make other disciples who make other disciples. Two steps that start today. With every head bowed and every eye closed. I want you to just take a moment. Just take a moment right now. And I want you to ask yourself, can I truly say I'm a disciple? Right now, if I died, what's left? Does my life go beyond my eulogy? Does it go beyond a few pictures in a picture album? Does it go beyond a few posts on Facebook? What is left of me? Am I truly a disciple? I want you to be as real as you can with yourself right now and not worry about what anybody else may think or may say about you. Your eternity hangs in the balance this morning. Is that you? If that's you, I want you to slip your hand up. No need to be embarrassed. Maybe you slipped away. Maybe you used to be a disciple. Maybe you used to have a, a genuine relationship with Jesus and things, things have happened. One thing led to another and now you're not. If that's you, slip your hand up. This is your moment. God, I want to be a disciple. God, I want to know you and I want to have a personal and genuine relationship with you. Is that you? Father, I ask that right now, Lord, if there be anyone in this room who does not have a personal and genuine relationship with you, that in this moment they pray, Father, forgive me. Help me. Save me from my sins. I am not myself. I now want to be used by you. I'm a new creation because the old is gone. You've forgiven me. You've forgiven me of my sins, and I will follow you all the days of my life. If that's you, pray that prayer right now. Father, we thank you. And the second thing, and I, I, I hope and pray that this be everyone. No hands went up for salvation, so with this next one, every hand in the building should go up because this is what we were created for. This is what we are called for. Will you say today that you are ready and that you are willing to go and make other disciples? If that's you in this moment, I want you to raise both hands up to your Lord and your Savior because I believe that right now in this moment he is going to pour out a strength He's going to pour out all authority that is in heaven and on earth because he is with us in this house right now. Father, hands are raised all across your house, God. We are trusting you right now, God, to show us where to go, who to go talk to, what, what parts of the world to go to, and share your light, God. As our hands are raised, I ask, Lord, right now that you pour out strength. You pour out wisdom, God. You pour out direction for where you would have us to go to make disciples and disciples and disciples. Lord, you have your way. Show us our one and help us to pour into them. Father, and I ask that you give us one that will pour into us. so that our cup continually runs over. 
Let your Holy Spirit fall upon us right now, God, as we go out into all nations to the end of time and we make disciples who make disciples. Father, we thank you for what you have done today and what you are going to continue to do, God. God, we give you the praise. We give you the honor and the glory for what has taken place here this morning. For it's in your most precious and holy name we do pray. Amen. Can we just give God a hand clap of praise?